Hello, everybody. Welcome to the class tonight. Today is Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday at last. And of course, we will be here in class again, but it's the last class of the week, definitely. So we are going to check for, first of all, the platform as usual. And here is it. So this is the class of today. So this is the question for today. And also remember that we need to finish, right? The midterm test by tomorrow during the day. If you haven't, you still have one day. Well, I will try to send the grades tomorrow around 9, 9.30 to Insaforb. So if you still haven't finished, you have tonight and tomorrow morning, but before 9 and 9.30, okay? Okay, okay teacher, thank you. It's a pleasure, my friends. If you have questions, let me know, and it will be a pleasure. So we are going to then check the attendance as usual. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present, teacher. Perfect. Hey, congratulations on your day. Thank you, teacher. Nice. <laughs> Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanes. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel. Present teacher. Ah, oh, good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Here, teacher, present. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Zuleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. Very good. So we're going to start the, the class. Let me just check something. Okay, so this is the class of today. Let's see. Okay, um, I remember we checked this already. Anyways, this is the topic for today. We're going to check just a few things. So either or, as you remember, this uh, is like uh, the pair conjunctions when you use two conjunctions together. And in this time, it's going to be either or or whether or. That is going to be like, either you do this or the other one. Do you remember? It's one of the two options. Then we're going to use either or. For example, John must be living either in Canada or in Brazil. So it's just one of the two options. You either listen to me or do whatever you want to do. Okay, so it's either one or the other one. I remember we checked that already. Maybe this is just a review, but it's in on the book. Actually, we're going to continue with the book today. And the other one is whether or is like, for example, I don't know whether he took a cab or he walked to home. So this is kind of similar. So it's going to be one thing or the other thing, one happened or the other thing, okay? You have to learn them whether they are easy or difficult. So. That is it, it's kind of kind of easy, I guess. But let me ask you, do you have any question about pair conjunctions? The main difference between these two, because I understood that in the first one, uh, you do or you can do only one of, of the two 
options. You can choose just just one, okay? okay. Or one or another. Okay. okay. And the second one? The second one is very similar. I mean, for example, in the first example, it says, I don't know whether he took a cab or he walked to home. So maybe this is like more open. When you use oh, whether, okay, okay. Uh, it's like you don't know what is the result. You don't know what is going to happen. You know that there are two options. Okay, any of the options might be possible. In the first one, it's like yes, you have to choose. So this okay, is like okay, okay. like the difference. Let's say uh -huh. okay, okay. So for me, uh, for for better understanding of this of this per conjunction, the first one, one of the two options. And the second one, uh -huh, for, for choosing. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second one, you can choose one uh, or another. Okay? Yeah, I mean, it's like more open and you don't know what uh -huh. is the solution for that one. I mean, depending on the context. So for example, in the first one, it says, I don't know whether he took a cab or he walked home. I mean, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. He had the two options. I don't know what happened. On the second uh -huh. one, you have to learn them, but you have to, that makes it similar to the first one, right? Mm -hmm. So either or, so you have to <clears> learn <throat> them, whether they are easy or difficult. So there is no option, but you are going to do both. You are going to learn them uh, if they are easy and then also difficult, right? Mm -hmm. So, but in the first one is just one or the other one for you to, you need to, to take one side. Okay. Good. Anyways, we're going to check the book. On the book, we have a little bit more of examples. So let's see. Yvonne, could you please help me with this first part with the chart? How to use per conjunction? We are not able to hear you, Yvonne. Okay, okay, thank you. Either or present a choice between two options, the verb which follows two subject joined by or must agree with the second subject. Examples, millennials are either self in, entitled. In, entitled or self-centered. Either John or Rick is going to prepare the progress report on the project. Okay, very Another good. Part? Uh, yes, please, just to read. Okay. Whether or is used to express doubt or choice between two possibilities. Example, the new guy didn't know whether to quit or to keep his job during his first day. I don't know whether millennials are difficult to work with or not. Very good. So I guess that is like the difference, the one that we were telling. So in the first one, either or it is for you to choose. There are two <laughs> options and then you have to choose. On the other one are possibilities. We don't know exactly yeah. what is going to be happening, but there are the possibilities. Okay, okay. Very good. Okay, let's check some, uh, something. Uh, what is, well, what is self-entitled? Anybody? Are you selfish? No. Kind of selfish, yeah, very good. And what is self-centered? All must be around them. Um, around them, yeah. Okay, very good. That is it. So millennials are either self-entitled or self-centered. Okay. And uh, I mean, it's like they are either this or the other one or just one, right? Either John or Rick is going to prepare the progress report on the project. So it's just uh, or either John or Rick, only one, one person. Remember that when the options, when the two options are the subjects, then we can start with the conjunction, right? Either John or Rick. And remember that the verb is going to agree with the, the, 
yeah, with the second subject. So Rick is singular. Mm -hmm. So we're speaking about the two people, but since the last, the, the second subject is going to be Rick, which is singular, it's going to be is, is going to prepare the progress report on the pro. Kind of weird because mentally <laughs> we will think there are two persons should be are. Uh -huh. The but thing yeah. is that, yeah, that, that, is, that is Spanish. When mm. we think like that, it's Spanish. Whenever we're thinking that's, that's not, it doesn't make sense. It's mm. because we remember how, how we do it in Spanish. But mm. that's why these kind of things, we, it's very good for, for us to exercise this a lot. Whenever some things doesn't feel like natural, it's because we really need to jump into this kind of grammar and then try to try to use it as as much as possible so it's going to be part of your dna okay so that is it so for example if we say either teachers or students if we say like that it's going to be r yes. either teachers so or subjects is plural right it's a plural one yeah mm -hmm. that is it very good on the other hand we have whether or is used to express doubt or choice. I mean, choice is possible as the first one. So it can be equivalent, but also can express doubt or situation that might be possible, possibilities, okay? For example, the new guy didn't know whether to quit or to keep his job during his first day. So maybe that happens to, to us, right? Whenever we go to a new job and it's like overwhelming, we say, oh my goodness, what I'm doing here? But at the end, everything is fine, right? And uh, so there are two options. He had to take the decision, but the possibilities were there. I don't know whether millennials are difficult to work with or not. So we don't know. There is a possibility. That depends probably on the, on the person that you are going to work with, right? What is guy, my friends? Someone. A man. A man. The friends, right? The people that work with us. It refers to people, right? In this case, it's a singular, so it's the new guy, the new person. But always is uh, referring to a uh, male, right? To a male, yeah. That's, well, that's not a actually not. It can no. be, uh, when it's singular, most likely it's going to be a male, but it's not a rule. When it's plural, it's like, uh, it can be only boys and it can be boys and girls. So for example, if I'm far of someone and I'm talking with another one, and let's say Ileana is there on the other block, I can say that guy. <laughs> well, it's possible, but it's not that common, to be honest, if it's singular. If it's singular, uh -huh. it's better to say the girl. That girl, uh -huh, the uh, girl. girl. But if it's plural, yeah, that includes both. Wow, okay. The guys. The, the guys. guys. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys, you're saying, I mean, it can be uh -huh. boys, girls. Well, now we have a lot of genders, right? So it can be mm. oh whatever God. you want to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so that is it. That is it. Guys is in general. Hey, people. Hey, friends. Hey, you. <laughs> whatever you want to say. So that is like, guys. Oh, fella. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hello, yeah. Okay, very good. So, any questions about this little grammar? No questions. Clear as horchata. Nice. Let's see if that is true. So, we're going to do the exercise here. We're going to complete with the conjunctions. Okay, it could be either or or whether or. So I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to complete it. If you have the book printed, this is the chance for you to fill it out or you can use notebook or anything like that. So we can check it. So let's move on. If you want me to move the book uh, to the grammar, of course you can tell me so I can do it.
I guess the one writing this exercise, mm -mm. he or she didn't, don't like the, the millennial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, we're going to check about that one because I wanted mm -hmm. to check first the, the grammar so we can do the exercise on the platform. But then we're going to speak about millennials and I mean okay. other generations. And, but well, we're going to read and then we're going to provide opinion. But yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the world is changing anyways. Yeah. Okay, have you finished already? Yes, teacher. Let's give it a shot then. So number one, who wants to tell us how it's gonna be that? Me. Okay, go ahead, Giselle. Okay, the future of a company depends on whether there is an investment or not on employee training. Okay, everybody agrees on this? I agree. Yeah, I agree too. Okay, good. So that's fine. Thank you. Number two, who's going to do that? I can read it. Please. Okay. Either the boss provides opportunities for learning or the millennials will start asking for a change. Definitely. That, that's the one. Very good. Okay. Good. Number three, who wants to check number three? Maybe me. Go ahead, please. Whether you decide to encourage millennials' ambitions or to set boundaries for their behavior will depend on your development plan for employee. Very good. Everybody agrees on this? You use weather, right? Weather, yeah. I put. I have dab in that. <laughs> okay. Because I use either thinking in, oh, it's starting with the subject. But I don't know, I'm not sure. Well, actually it's possible with weather as well. It's possible to start with the subject with weather because it's the, it's the subject, the ones that are going to, to change, right? Uh, here one says that the boss provides, no, number three, right? You decide, you decide to encourage millennials ambitions or to set boundaries for their behavior will depend on your development. We see plan. two options, but I don't know. Both seems, okay, this is the, like a tip. If both options, are possible, then the option is weather because weather is for choice and also for possibilities, right? Mm -hmm. But if you see that it's clearly either this or the other, so that is going to be just either. Mm -hmm. That is. I was, I was thinking about weather because in the third line it says, "Will depend on your blah blah blah." Okay. Yeah. yeah. Actually. Actually, I'm, I, I think just like, like for me, because I understand like will depend on your development is a possibility. Possibility. Not a fact. That so. mm -hmm. Yeah, that is it. So it's going to be better, definitely. Okay. Good, but that's, that's why we're here to practice, definitely. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, number four, how is it gonna be? Anybody? Me. Okay, um, Danny. I, but uh, you either let them spread 
their ideas or let them go. Okay, uh, everybody agrees on this? I agree. Yeah, I agree. That is, that is the one, very good, nice. Number five, anybody? Anybody? So we meet it again. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah, you saw. Go ahead. Okay, being in charge of millennials is difficult. You either wrap communication around respect or they will feel unappreciated. Very good. Everybody agrees on that one? So you repeat, please. Uh, she used either and or. In the number I... four. Number I, five. Uh, five. I use weather. Weather. <laughs> I was confused a little bit with this. But <laughs> they will. For me, it's a possibility. They will. For me, feel... it's not. It's not a choice. It's something that is a consequence. Could happen. Uh, oh. Okay. Consequence. That is a very nice word. The one that you use. So let's analyze on that one. Being in charge of millennial, uh, yeah, for number five is it right. Being in charge of millennials is difficult. You, let's just yeah, either, okay. You either wrap communication around respect or they will feel unappreciated. Let's use the other one and listen how it, how it goes. Being in charge of millennials is difficult. You whether wrap communication around respect or they will feel unappreciated. Okay, this one, Yes, it has a will, but will is in this case as a consequence. So uh, in this okay. case, it's going to be either. It's going to be okay. either, you either wrap communication or wrap, okay. if you don't do that one, uh -huh. that there will be a happen. consequence, right? That, uh, that okay. will happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And the other one is because it says will depend. Uh -huh. so it's it a probability. Uh -huh. Very good. But in this case, yeah. I mean, the, the chances, mm -hmm. I mean, the maybe there are chances down, but the chances are very high, right? So mm -hmm. it's almost for sure that it's going to happen. Uh, okay. Good. Number six, who wants to share? Anybody? Me teacher, the social media has in, enabled millennials to be a powerful vehicle to make whether go sorry vehicle vehicle the, for marketing whether mm -hmm. this is for good or bad it is still to be seen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anybody agrees on this one? What do you think? Yes, I agree. Very good. This is weather because it's still to be seen. Mm -hmm. Possibilities, right? We don't know for sure. So, might be or might not. Okay, very good. I guess it's kind of clear, right? But if it's not kind of clear, you mm -hmm. can let me know. No, now it's better with the example. Very clear, teacher. Very good. So, that is it. Maybe whenever you are speaking in English, sometimes we use the pair conjunction in, in more common cases and the, mm -hmm. one of the most common is going to be either or because you are providing two choices. Sometimes there are many other ways to say that there are possibilities. You might go, you might do, so mm -hmm. you can exchange that one. It's possible to use weather, but either or is very, very common, okay? Just remember that if there are possibilities, if it's not for sure, well, it's weather. But if definitely you need to choose between one or the two options, then it's going to be either or. Good. Uh, let's see some words. What is investment? Anybody? I know in Spanish what it is, but I don't know how to express it. Well, no, in English, please. You can do it. Yeah. Just look for some common words, that's it. Investment. Investment. When you wear a vest, nah, it's not that. <laughs> it's to use some resource to, uh -huh. to uh -huh. produce something. 
assign right. assign resources to in order to produce uh, something. Uh -huh. Very Profit, good. Benefits. Or to get, uh -huh. Uh -huh. to get benefits. Very or good. To be, to be profit, profitable. Profitable. It, uh -huh, profitable. <laughs> Very good. That is investment. So when you have some resources and you invest in something so you can get an outcome that is good for you or your company. Good. Let's see. Uh, let's see. What is to encourage? Cheer up. Cheer up. Very good. When you cheer people to do something, like when I, the teacher says, what do you think? And you, when you speak, right? So you try to. Very good. Boundaries. What is boundaries? No, I don't know what is, what is this word. Anybody knows or do I say? Oh, in, I saw it on a CD like cover, a, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's like restriction or limits. Something. Limits. Um, Very good. Boundaries oh. are like limits. It can be physical limits. It could be in your mind. It could be in many ways. Limits. Okay. And... Let's see what else. What is to wrap? In Make full, I one. know what it is, but. <laughs> <laughs> Make it uh, one or you, you is one thing reunited with another. I don't know. It's like sticky. <laughs> Isn't it? Okay. I don't have to say. Uh, yeah, rap is like, in this case, we're talking about communication. So it's like, uh, put everything together and give it to the people. So that is like rap communication. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is to feel and appreciate it? You proceed to appreciate it. It's a very sad feeling, right? When you feel that you're doing mm -hmm. a lot and the other people, the company, your friends, uh, whatever is not appreciating what your efforts are, right? Please never feel unappreciated. You can always go and say to the other person, to the company in good terms, that you don't feel very good, okay? This is a very good thing that you need to do. Let's see. Uh, there is no other, I guess. Any questions before we move on? Okay, so let's speak about millennials then. Defining generations where millennials end in Generation Z begins. Well, this is the generation that don't like the labels, but here we are speaking about labels, right? So uh, let's see, Danny, could you please read the first two paragraphs? Um, for decades, a few research center has been commit, 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 committed, committed to measuring public attitudes on key issues and documenting difference in those attitudes across demographic groups on lens of often employed by researchers, by researchers at the center to understand this difference is that one of generation. Generation provide the opportunity to look at American both by their place and the life cycle, whether a young adult, a middle-aged parent or a retiree, and by, a, and by their membership in a cohort of individuals who were born at a similar time. Good, what did you get from this? Well, the, this center um, has been researching um, um, attitudes and people in the, in the, in the age. Um, they are grouping in, in, the, um, in that three kind of, 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 um, of age in adults, middle, or parent, or retired. And 
and that have been a, a student their attitude and and that okay in the difference between the generation i think it could be i don't know what is about all the all the content of this article but i don't know if if they study first millennials and the um, i forgot the 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 last generation that i think that z i don't i don't remember and all kind of <laughs> generation okay very good actually there are a lot of generations we're going to check into that a little bit more the topic is millennials anyways is that <laughs> the, the main that we're going to discuss about but man the scientists the researchers have labeled people but I believe it's because of the culture, right? It's because what is surrounded is because it impacts our lives in different ways. So for example, people that were born 10, 15 years ago, they are very, a, a lot involved into technical things. Uh, they don't like many other things. For example, they don't like to watch TV a lot. They prefer to do other activities. So that's why the researchers, they try to, to analyze what is happening what is the attitude what is the behavior of people and they uh, it's not that your age is going to uh, put you in one label but it's because of the environment where you have grown it's going to cause an impact on you so that is it so let's check some words what is to be committed oops my goodness compromise to uh, focus on something very good to be compromised. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Attitude, we checked that already, I remember. One lens says, what is a lens? In, I think lens is like uh, you are using now to see better. <laughs> That's it, like glasses, right? The lens is inside. I mean, and it's, I mean, if for you to, to when, when you are going to see the stars, for example, have you seen the new pictures of the Weber? Mm. Yeah, I have. They have used lenses, different lenses, big lenses for, for us to be able to see. Amazing, right? That is amazing how the stars. Mm -hmm. So in this case, this word is used like a, one of the techniques they use or something like that very good that is it so mm -hmm. it's like a metaphor right so yeah. what the lens is like for for they to look they are looking at you whenever you're doing something the investigation and, way they are doing is in this case. Mm -hmm. so that is it and uh well let's uh, continue then researchers understand the different that let's see provide i have a doubt in the pronunciation of one word mm -hmm. I know retire, but I don't know if in this case is retiree. Retiree, yeah, because this is like the person that retired. Uh -huh. Retire is that I, I am retired. Uh -huh. uh, actually, when you say I am retired, the action is am. Retire uh -huh. is an adjective. An adjective, I'm sorry, exactly. Uh -huh. And this one is actually the word, the noun for the person. The noun for is, the per oh, okay. That most here in the Salvador, we are not going to be able to retire. But anyways, <laughs> that is another topic. Retiree, ah, okay. Retiree. Yeah, that is it. Very good. So now we know that one. And uh, it says a young adult, a middle-aged parent or a retiree. So what is a middle-aged? Uh, maybe a man on his forties. Uh, how how many years? It might be that one. Thirties, forties. Thirties, forties, forties to 50. fifty, maybe. Okay, might be some like that one, right? Okay. What is a membership? Oops. You are part <clears> of. <throat> okay, when you are part of. Uh, exclusive things and you sometimes you need to pay for that one right like netflix that you are a member of netflix and you need to pay <laughs> okay uh cohort mm 
like a group. It's like a group. Very good. That is it. That is it. You can see that sometimes you can use fancy words for you to exchange things and, and look better, right? So, but it's a group of people. That is it. Okay, the next paragraph is going to be for Ada Cáceres. Could you please help us? Okay, teacher. As we were examining, it's a password generational cohort to give research a tool to analyze change in periods of time. They can provide a way to understand how different formative experience, such as war events and technology, economic and social shifts, interacts with the life. life. The life the life cycle, cycle. live life cycle and again, again aging. process to aging process to shift people's theories of the world. Okay, yes. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, will younger and while younger while younger and older adults uh, many differ in their big wheels at given moment. The generational courts allow research to examine how today older adults uh, feel about given issues when they in service were young. Uh, as will as to describe describe how the trajectory of big wheels meet differ across My generation. Team. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. What did you get from this, Ada? Okay. Este, eh, for me, it's a low eh, examination how young adults and other adults eh, have the, been the impact of their learning coupled with today's is ver versus the technologies. Very good, okay. So it says, as we examine generation cohorts give researchers tool to analyze changes in views over time. So that's why they do, right? They see that the behavior has changed. For example, right now, it's very common to see influencers and how people are getting famous and getting a lot of money with things that maybe in the past were not that popular, that correct. So things are changing in many ways for good or for bad. Actually, do you remember that yesterday that we were discussing, do you believe that life is going to be better in the future? Well, maybe in some aspects, yes. Maybe in some aspects, not. Next week, we're going to go more in deep into that one. So that's what they do. They uh, check the behavior and they see what is the impact of things like events and technological, economic and social things that have happened here. Let's check some words. Uh, let's see. There were some, let me see. What is a life cycle? A period of time for your life, let's say. <laughs> then you, uh, no. children, or for a product, for a service, mm -hmm. for almost Born, everything. Mm -hmm. Grow and die. Actually, Born everything. Die. Born, yeah. grow, and die, that's right. <laughs> we die, right? We have expiration. <laughs> uh -huh. It's very yeah. sad, but it's true. <laughs> so there will be a time when your organs, your body is not going to react the way that you would like mm -hmm. or the way that you did before. So everything expires. The black holes in the universe, they die. So everything is going to die and that is a life cycle, right? So, and uh, I, I remember something. I remember that somebody, uh, they say that when anybody asked um, Galileo Galilei, how old was he? He was saying like 10 years. And they say like 10, 10 years, how is that possible? And he used to say, no, it's because I believe that is uh, 10 years for me to live more, I mean, it's not what I have lived, what I have to live more. So that's what I count. He was saying, it wasn't, <laughs> I don't know how, how many years <laughs> can I say that? Okay. So aging, what is aging? By getting older? 
like grow up? Growing up, getting older, right? Some things that we don't like, but it's always there. We started mm -hmm. to grow older the moment that we were born. So it's part of life. And let's see, process to shape people's views of the world. What is shape? To get that form. Like figure? To figure something, right? To interpret, mm -hmm. to, to draw something based on, in this case, data. Let's see, what is to differ? Have uh, some differences. Very good. To have to having some differences. Uh -huh. Yeah, actually, there is a there is a very common expression in English. I beg to differ. So when you say that, it's like somebody saying something and you you do not agree, right? I beg to differ. I respect your opinion, but for me, it's not like that. Okay. okay. I beg. Or beg. I beg. Beg is going to be B as in boy, E, G. Beg oh, okay. to I beg. Defer. I thought I bet. Okay. No, I, I, beg. I beg. I beg to defer. Beg to defer. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that is very common and you can use it. Please use it. Whenever I say something, you can say, I beg to defer, teacher. That is not okay. it. <laughs> okay. in, in which case must you use, I beg your pardon? I beg to defer that? I beg your pardon. Okay, that is when you want to say, excuse me, uh, and then you want to interrupt somebody or to do something, right? It's like a very polite way, no? Very polite way, yeah. When you want to be polite, when you're in a meeting for a job or something like that. When, you, when you're with your friends, it's like, excuse me, no, right? Something is different. Okay. Very good. Let me see what else we have here. Uh, no other. Okay. The other two paragraphs are going to be for Juan Miguel. Okay, teacher. Pew Research Center has been studying the millennial generation for more than a decade, but by uh, 2018, it became clear to us that it was time to determine a could of could of point between millennials and the next generation. Turning 38 this year, the oldest millennials are well are well into, into adulthood and they first entered adulthood before today's youngest adults, adults were born. In order to keep the millennial generation analytically meaningful and to begin looking at what might be unique about the next cohort, Pew Research Center decided a year ago to use 1996 as the last beard year of, sorry, as the last beard year for millennials for our future work. Anyone, anyone, sorry, anyone born between 1981 and 1996 ages, 23 to 38 in 2019, it's, it's considered a millennial. And anyone born from 1997 onward, it's a, it is part of a new generation. Cool, what did you get from this? That I am a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> very good. <clears throat> so we're going to then check Later on, <laughs> to see if that 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 fits into you and the other people. Here, so, uh, uh, um, uh, this this topic is very um, how can I say uh, com com uh, com como conflictivo. Yeah, conflictive. Uh, yeah, it's like uh -huh, it's conflicted because it is a um. A thin line uh, between two generations that have similar things, but have but but also have many many differences. Okay, uh, first 
or, or I I mean one of uh, one of the most marked differences is that a uh, we born and the technology came to our lives, okay? And for the other generation, they born with the technology. So uh, I, I think this is the, the most important thing uh, or, or the most important difference uh, between the two generations, okay? And uh, as the second paragraph says, there is a, a, a uh, taking this uh, research, uh, uh, como tomar en cuenta? Taking consideration. Uh -huh, taking, uh, taking consideration this research. Uh, after, uh, if you were born after 1997, you are uh, a new generation. Uh, this generation is uh, generation Z, yeah? That is correct. Uh, and before this year, uh, we are millennials. So um, in, in essence, I, I think this is, <laughs> this is the, the, the center part of those two paragraphs. Very good, perfect. Yeah, actually that is it. So it's like uh, researchers now are able to identify the boundaries, right? From one generation to the other one, depending on the behavior and depending on many things that impacted the environment of these people. So uh, let's see, new words. Okay. Cut off point in the... Okay, cut Second, off. Right? Uh -huh. What is the cutoff? Anybody? Like a limit? Like a limit, like, uh, yeah, when you say this is it, right? We're going to uh -huh. cut things here and it's going to be different from here. And you said one word, I thought it was cut, space off. Oh, well, yeah, it's a one word, yeah, cut off. Okay. Is the point that the point where you establish the start of one uh, or, or the beginning of one situation, okay? Like a breakdown? Like a breakdown, good. So it's okay, like- Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's like the finishing point and uh, at the same time, the beginning point. The beginning point, okay. Okay. Turning, what is turning? Become when you're in. evolving. When you become, right? Good, turning 38 this year, okay? And then it says uh, adulthood. What is adulthood? <clears throat> the stage uh, for, can we, no, this is not the last stage, right? Ancient is, will be the last, right? Yeah, elderly, yeah. Elderly, oh my God. <laughs> Ancient <laughs> is like 100 years. 100. <laughs> okay. Adulthood will be before elderly, right? Yeah, definitely. So that is going to be, yeah, around 40s, 40s, or yeah, something like that, 40s. So that is it. Let's see. Meaningful. What is something meaningful? It comes from the word meaning, so it means what it stands, I guess. Okay. Yes, something that is meaningful is something that is important, relevant, right? Okay. Relevant for a person, or in this case, to the research. Let's see. Okay. So the other paragraph is a huge one, but because it's, there is a graphic here, that is going to be for Giselle. Okay, uh, since. Yeah, please. Okay, 
Since the oldest among these rising generation are just turning 22 this year, and most are still in their teens or younger, we hesitated at first to give them a name, Generation C. C. The I generation and homelanders were some early candidates in our first in deep look at this generation, we use the term post millennials as a placeholder. But over the past year, Gen Z has taken hold in popular culture and journalism. Sources ranging for, from Merriam Webster and Oxford to the Urban Dictionary, not include this name for the generation that follows millennials and I can see the rest of the, okay. I think the teacher is gone. I guess the teacher had internet issues, right? Yeah, maybe problem <laughs> with his connection. Because he just- The teacher is there, uh -huh. For English cooperative. Yes. Okay, let's move. Okay, just wait. Mm -hmm. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear now you. Now we can hear you. But now you uh, can, we can hear uh -huh. you. But we okay. cannot see you. <laughs> but we can yeah, see you, teacher. Just check. There was a problem with my internet. I'm sorry, but let me just check if I can fix. Can you see me now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. I'm sorry about that one. I guess you are here already, so you can just finish. Yeah, here, yeah. But over the past year, Gen Z has taken hold in popular culture and journalism. Sources ranging from Merriam, Webster, and Oxford to the Urban Dictionary now include this name for the generation that follows millennials. And Google Trends data show that Generation Z is far outpacing other names in people's searches for information. While there is no scientific process for deciding when a name has stuck. The momentum is clearly behind Gen Z. Okay, what did you get from this? Sorry, that Generation C is maybe in the actual year or over the, the, the latest no, latest years okay no the recent years maybe okay. became in the most popular generation because they are still maybe on their way to be like examinated or or there is still a lot of a lot of things that 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 scientists are discovering yet Okay. Because they, they only have just 22 years. So they are like uh, puppies maybe for the scientists. <laughs> yeah, they are still researching on them, right? They don't mm -hmm. know what is going to happen. They know that they 
have some partners, they have some, for example, as we say, the usage of the technology, I mean, they were born with that one, right? They were babies using cell phones or computers or things like that. So definitely they are still researching on that one. Good. Let's see if we can find some words. Well, it says that before it was past millennials, but now they know that it's Gen Z. Uh, what is a journalism? I think it's a profession to report news or something. Very good. So it's like researching, getting some information, and then you will be able to report. What report is the, word, the, people, the people that write for, for newspapers or something like that? Experience. Very good. Yeah, something like that. It's like reporters that they go and research and make a story, and then they would be able to, to provide the information. Sources. What is sources? Is where that something came from. Okay. It's like where it comes, in this case, the information, right? But it can be sources of many things. Let's see. Trends. What is trend? Oops. A fashion topic, maybe, but not, not about fashion. A, a topic who is uh, talking like popular uh -huh. Po popular okay very good that is it that is like something that I, uh, trend is something that is popular it's a topic that everybody's talking about right mm -hmm. let's see uh, it says for outpacing what is that Okay, that is like um, when there are some, for example, when you imagine that we decide that at the end of the class, we're going to go and eat something and we have three or four options. But let's say that the first option is tacos and it's four votes. The other option is uh, pizza and it has four votes. The other one is, um, I don't know, Chinese food four votes and the other one is like i don't know pupusas and that is going to have 14 votes so okay that the last one is outpacing far outpacing a lot of distance so that is it it's like more popular is something that is getting there right let's see stuck what is to be stuck It's stopping something. It's not going any further, neither. Uh, and you can't get uh, out of some place or some situation? That is it. So it's very popular for situations, right? When you feel that you're stuck in your job, for example. Mm -hmm. I don't like this position anymore. I don't know what else to do. I don't have the chances to move on. So that happens sometimes. Okay, so we're going to stop for a while and then we're going to check the attendance. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present, teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanes. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. 
present. present. Good. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibet Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. So let's continue with this one that has become some kind of interesting. Let's see. Okay. So the next paragraph is going to be for Jose Wilfredo. Is it possible for you, Jose Wilfredo? Not possible, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, just that I don't know why. I don't see it. You don't see the screen? Screen, yeah. Oh my goodness. And the other people that you are able to see? It? Yes, teacher. Mm, that's I good. will do something, teacher. I will uh, sign out and then I will log in again. Don't worry. So uh, you will be the next, okay? Okay. So, let's see. Um, let's see who hasn't read. Jose Osmin, could you please read? Is it possible for you? Not possible. Okay. Maria Alejandra. Okay, sure. Perfect. Is there in generational? generational. Yeah, uh, the two paragraphs, please. Okay, generational cut off points aren't an exact science and they should be viewed, viewed prim, primarily as tools, allowing for the kinds of analog analyzes the detail above, but their boundaries are not arbitra arbitrary. Generations are often considered by their span, span. But again, there is no a grip up, upon, upon, formula for, upon formula for how long that is should be at um, seven, uh, 16 years um, 1981 and 1981 and 1993 our in definition of millennium is equivalent in age spent to their preceding generation, generation X, born between 1965 and 1980. By this definition, were are shorter are than the span of the baby boomers in 19, uh, 19 years. Uh, the only generational official mm -hmm. officially designated by the USA Censors Bureau, Bureau, Bureau. Bureau. Uh -huh. based on the famous surgeon in the post WW2 World War II. Uh, World War II, beer, beer in 1946, and a significant decline in. Birthday after 1974. 64. 64. Unlike the boomers, they are not comparably definite three holes by which lay which, which late generational boundaries are defined. But for an analytical purpose, we believe in 1996 is a meaningful 
put up between millennials and G and G S for a number G. of G C for a number of reasons, including K political, economical, and, and social factors that define the millennial generation for my years. Good. What did you get from this? <laughs> I think that I think that I read for uh, the different um, for for that year separates a different generation for that age or millennials that uh, baby boomers and and say for the different reason that separate uh, these generations or um, that historics or acontecimientos históricos? Historical facts or uh, events? Uh, a different event to uh, or the uh, uh, views for the, the important moments and the political, economical, or social part to del, delimitar. Yeah, to you can say uh, get boundaries or get limitations. Get limitation between in the different generations or the age uh, or that separate separate and for the specifics and say that you you one generation or you that other depends your age or you uh, your age. Okay, very good. So that is it. I mean. Some researchers still are arguing about some differences. I mean, some limitations on which starts one generation and the other one. But the one that is kind of very clear is about the millennials. Well, that is kind of very, very clear, they say. And uh, well, actually there is a chart below that we're going to see what is your generation, people. So before we move on to that one, let's check some words here. Let's see. What is something arbitrary? Like in Spanish. <laughs> okay, how is that? Um, like, like maybe in this concept it's not an obligation, not arbitrary. Uh, yes. Or so, not necessary. Not necessary, it might be, yeah. Mm -hmm. Arbitrary is like, I mean, some people might not be objective about deciding on something, right? Uh, this one is uh, a good one, span. Anybody knows what span is? Yeah, no teacher, no idea. Okay, that's why we're here. So span is like uh, the, Okay, I don't know. Anyways, so the span is like the length of a period. So something like that. So that's why we're using this word a lot here. So I said generations are often considered by their span. So the length of the period of the time where they were burned. But again, there is no agreed upon formula for how long that span should be. I mean, we can say that it's every 16 years, every 14 years. So it depends on many things. So it's the length of that. And let's see. I don't know well, if I'm confused teacher, but so baby boomers, who are the baby boomers? Oh, we're the going name? to. Uh, uh, we're okay. going to check here below, um, uh -huh. okay. because you can see that generation Generation X are the ones born between 1965 uh -huh. and 1980. Uh -huh. So those are the Generation X, and then I guess is the baby boomers, and then is the millennials. I guess we're going to check, but we're going to check first here. Like, let's see if there is any other. Yeah. 
Okay, so this one, and every time that you see that in English, that is in American English, is World War II. Okay. And what is bureau? Anybody knows what is bureau? An office. It's an office, very good. And actually this comes from the French. I mean, bureau is the French for desk, right? Desk. Mm -hmm. Very good. What is a birth rate? The amount or the quantity. Uh, the measure. Okay. Uh, the measure of uh -huh. beer, beer. Birth. Perfect. That is it, like the rate for people born in that part. And there says threshold. What is a threshold? Okay, threshold is like a door where you, it's like a transition. It's like a, a break point for you to move from one thing to the other one. So that is like a threshold. So there is, there is no comparable different threshold. So there is no, no point of, of break for this one. And let's see, there are no other like this. Okay, so here is it. So if you were born in from, 1928 to 1945. And that is going to be as silent, I guess it says, or yeah, I guess silent. Ages from 74 to 91 years old. Okay, not that many people in the world right now about that one. Uh, the baby boomers are the ones that were born in from the 1946 to the 64. So more popular. Okay. They are, Generation X is from the 65 to the 80. Millennials are from the 81 to the 96. And the generation Z is uh, from the 97 to the 2012. So which generation are you? Uh -huh. Interesting. So let's check the other paragraph. That is going to be for Let's see, Heidi, could you please check into the other paragraph? Sure. Okay. Most millennials were born, sorry, most millennials were between ages of five and 20 when the 9-11 terrorist attacks shocked the nation and many were old enough to comprehend the historical significance of that moment, while most members of Gen Z have little or no memory of that event. Millennials also grew up in the shadow of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, which sharped border views of the parties. Oops, sorry and contributed to the intense political polarization that shapes the current political environment. And almost millennials were between 12 and 27 during 2008 election, where the force of youth vote became part of the political conversation and helped elect the first black president. Added to that is the fact that millennials are most racially and ethically diverse adult generation in the nation's history. Yet next generation, generation Z, is even more diverse. Good, what did you get from Beyond that? politics, most millennial, no, okay. Uh, the, this generation millennials, um, they have, left uh, they have lived uh, most uh, actual part of the history right for example yeah. this this um the first black president for example they uh, remember just a, uh, or not even remember what happened during a terrorist attack of of 9-11 this kind of 
okay? Yet, so millennials, they have lived actually very important events in, in life, right? So that have uh, influenced their behavior. So have you seen, for example, that nowadays there are a lot of shooters there in the United States? I mean, I guess in July there were three or four already people shooting people, killing people on the streets in the US. I mean, that is crazy. And it's impacting in different ways, everything there. So that's why, that's why they uh, try to, they try to research about the behavior of people depending not only about the age, but also how different events, different technology, different things impact their life. So they try to understand what is going to happen in the future, right? So it's very interesting. We might think that it's not that relevant, but actually it is. So you can understand where they were and what can be happening in the future. Let's check some words. What is shook? Okay, actually that is the pass of shake. Okay, shook the nation and many were all enough. Let's see what else. Okay, it says sharpener, broader. What is broader? Okay, this one uh, is a word that expresses like a gap, a gap that at that time when the war in Iraq and Afghanistan happened, uh, it made the, the two parties in the US, because you know that there are only two parties there, the Republicans and the Democrats. Uh, the two parties, they had a, a bigger gap, a broader gap. So they were more distant from each other. So that is it. It's talking about the parties there, of course. And that's why they're talking about polarization because they started a fight. Uh, I mean, there has always been a fight between both of them, but now it's, it's worse. They are attacking each other. They are doing a lot of things that are not good, right? So let's see what else. And uh, what is ethnically diverse? A variety of, of ethnic. Hey, that is it. Variety of people from a lot of countries, right? So it has always been like that in the US, but now it's even more. Okay, and then generations. Okay. The other two paragraphs are going to be for Fernando. Okay, teacher. Uh, beyond, Mer. Yeah, beyond. Please. Mer. Okay, beyond politics, most millennials came of age and entered the workforce facing the, the haze of an economic recession. As is well documented, many of millennials' life choices, future earnings, and entrance to adulthood have been shaped by this recession in a way that may not be the case for their younger counterparts. The long term effect of of this slow star for millennials will be a factor in American society for decades. Technology, in particular, the rapid evolution of how people communicate and interact is another generation sh shaping consideration. Baby women grew up as television expanded dramatically, changing their lifestyle and connection to the world in fundamental ways. <clears throat> generation X, grew up as the computer's revolution was talking home, a millennials came of age during the internet explosion. Okay, what did you get from this? Uh, there's uh, characteristics of the different generations. Uh, in my case, I, 
I am part of the millennial generation because they, they my my beer is here. Okay. And I am agree with the <clears throat> sorry. I am agree with the with that characteristic that that say uh, during the internet explosion because when I was young I remember that internet is the begin and it was difficult to to connect or to get internet in house because it was expensive and it was not um not uh faster right now so it was very difficult but with the with the 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 past of the time uh, the internet has uh and the internet is essential part of of my life and of the life of everybody right now so i i agree with that i don't know that um uh, baby boomers because i didn't see the 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 beginning of the television um but at generation x yeah i, I agree because i i i see the the revolution of computing okay so that's that's all okay perfect thank you very much so that is it i mean you can see that different things have affected life of everybody and that's why they try to study about generations so they try to identify different things that are going to be in common for this kind of people so they are going to uh, grow in a different way thinking different things so and that actually changes the world right the world is been changing a lot dramatically i mean i believe personally that the social media things that are happening on internet are accelerating a lot of things so let's see what happens in the future Let's check some words. What is, let's say, beyond? Order, maybe. Order. Um, For, further. A further, okay. Uh -huh. Very good. Yeah, that is like far and beyond, they say, right? Uh, what is height? At the most tall? Yeah, it's like the top of something, right? In this case, an economic recession, okay? Let's see what else. Earnings, what is earnings? Incomes. Yeah. Incomes. Yeah, the incomes. Very good, that is it. What is a recession, my friends? When the economy is not growing up, I guess. This is like stuck. That is it. Good. You're using the vocabulary. Yeah. It's stuck. Uh huh. No, this, this, this. That is it, right? Recession. Actually, right now we are in a crisis, an economical mm -hmm. crisis. And that is a worldwide crisis. It's not only happening here. So let's see what happens in the future, right? And counterparts. <clears throat> what is counterparts? maybe uh like the opposite but not as a uh, no como contrarios not not like rivals yeah in this case as uh two parts who are uh, in the same in the same way but i am for my side and you are for your side but uh, we are uh, walking the, the same way, okay? With the same objectives and the same target. Very good, perfect. So that is his counterpart. A counterpart is something like this, like complementing, but different, right? Uh, what is the long-term? A large period of time. 
large period of time. Very good. Normally more than a year. Okay, let's see what else. What is lifestyle? Mm -hmm. The way how you conduct? The way how you live. Mm -hmm. The way you live your life, right? And mm -hmm. the style, meaning that the house you have, the car you have, the job you have, how healthy you eat, things like that. Good. And that is it. Okay. So the next two paragraphs are going to be for Jose Wilfredo. Are you able to see the screen now? Yes, teacher, just let me know which paragraph it is. It's going to be this, in this progression. Okay. Okay, is this progression what is unique for Generation Z? Is that all of the above have been part of their lives from the start? The iPhone launch in 2007, when the oldest Gen Zers were by the time they were in their teens, the primary means by which young Americans connect, connected with the web was through mobile devices, Wi-Fi and high bandwidth, cellular service, social media, constant connective, connectivity, and on-demand entertainment. In communication, our innovation millennials adapted to as they came of age. For those born after 1996, these are largely assumed. Good, what do you get from this? Well, this is an explanation about Generation Z that is the I let me see the generation C is the last uh, generation, right? That is it. Yeah, and and says that is a part of the start of life, and also um, it's meant that the iPhone launched in two thousand seven. Uh, and also tell us that some uh, American service, uh, some Americans are connecting to the websites uh, using their mobile devices and uh, Wi Fi and high bandwidth cellular connection uh, communication. Uh, this means that. Now we have a lot of um, benefits about it because after, before of this, we had a lowest bandwidth with a cellular. And now we have a size a 5G and something like that. So the, the connection is fairly established and is faster than the other ones. Very good question. And Go ahead, I'm sorry. That's it. I'm sorry, okay. So yes, I mean, what is unique, it says for the generation C is that they had everything from the very beginning. So when they were born, yeah. they had internet, computers, they have connectivity, social media, many things they have right now. What is going to happen in the future? What is going to come with the next generation? We still don't know. But that is interesting how they are going to evolve in a way that, uh, I mean, they are going to rule the world in a few years. So what is going to happen? We don't know. Okay, so uh, let's see any words here. Launch, what is to launch? Pull up. Pull up, release. Release, release. yeah. Good, perfect. What is what is bandwidth? How do you explain that? Uh, 
is the capacity for for your communication in your phone or your internet. Okay, very good. It's like the 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 speed of connectivity, right? That we have. Let's see any other. And uh, we don't have any other. Okay. So the next one is going to be for Marcus. Okay. Uh, the implication. Yeah, please. Okay. The implication of growing up in an um, always on techno technological environment are only now coming into focus. Uh, recent research has shown dramatic shift in young behavior, attitudes and lifestyle, both positive and concerning for those who came of age in this area. What we don't know is whether these are lasting generational imprints or characteristics of adolescents that will be that will become more muted over the course of their ad adulthood. Beginning to track this new generation over the time will be of significant importance. What did you get from this? Okay. Um, okay. Let me see. Okay, I understand that. Um, being always stick with the cell phone with the devices can result in in different behavior attitudes and lifestyles and also are both results positive and negative so uh, there are a lot of new characteristics and and issues too with the with the new generation do it to being always in, in the cell phone because um, it's like we always have to check the notification or the social media. So um, this this new generation um, come with 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 this dependency with the technology. So uh, it, it have to be the results in. in different lifestyle and behavior. And also, um, it's say muted. So I mean that they don't express so well with, with, with in, in their relationship. I don't know if, if, I'm, if I'm covered. Okay. Actually, that it says yes. And then we're still researching because we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, all the generation is still growing. And um, yeah, I mean, that kind of generation is like not talking to people, not relating with other people, not getting out because they prefer to be just on cell phone connected, you know. Good, let's check some words. Let's see. Shift, what is that? Changes, maybe. Turns to work. <laughs> well, no, we don't want to. <laughs> yeah, actually, I shift from my first job to my second job. You know, every day. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let's see what else. What is concerning? something you worry about. Very good. It's something that you are worried about. Nice. I don't see any other. Okay, so the next one is going to be for, let's see, Juan Miguel Brand. Okay. Pew Research Center is not the first to draw an analytical line between millennials and the generation to follow them. And many have offered well reasoned arguments for drawing that line a few years earlier or later than where we have. Perhaps as more data are collected over the years, a clear singular delineation will emerge. 
sorry, we remain open to recalibrating if that occurs, but more than likely the historical, technological, behavioral, and attitudinal data will show more of a continuum across generation, generations than a threshold. As has been the case in the past, this means that the differences within generations can be just as great as the difference across generations. And the youngest and oldest within a commonly defined cohort may feel more in common with bordering generations than the one to which they are designated. This is a reminder that generations them themselves are inherently diverse and complex groups, not simple caricatures. What did you get from that one? Um, <clears throat> as we're talking a, a minute, a few minutes, I was telling you that a, the line a, or the border a, between the generations. Okay, so they are trying to explain uh, in this case uh, how obviously with with their research how they uh, how they did to 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 draw this line okay um, but uh, more than a more than a line or more than saying you are from one or or, or other generation, <coughs> maybe uh, the behavior, the people's behavior and all the, um, how can I say this? Um, como el entorno, I don't know. The environment. Uh -huh, the environment. Uh, it helps to to define or to to define yeah to define a uh, what generation are you located or something like that. I don't know if it's correct. Yeah, yeah, that is fine. Actually, yeah, it's kind of difficult. I mean, researchers uh, they are trying to delimit everything. Uh, based on that, based on uh, how was the impact of historical events uh, or the environment of people in different times. So you, they define these people, they have this in common. That's why they act this way. So that's why it's important for them to research into this one and to set limits so they are going to be able to identify what kind of person are you? I know that it's kind of difficult because you, nobody likes labels nowadays, right? But yeah, we have in common many things that may help us act in one or another way. Of course, we are all different, but we have different uh, things in common. Um, let's, uh huh. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Good, let's check some words. It says, well, recent arguments. What is that? Maybe, maybe arguments that are well supported. Very good. So they have research and they have some facts to show and say, well, this is happening, right? Good, let's see what else. What is perhaps? Uh, like maybe. 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 Definitely maybe, okay. Let's see, what is something singular? Unique. Yeah, something unique. Good, unique. What is recalibrating? Mm. Reviewing uh, where the uh, gaps are in order to um, 
like look for a solution or something like that. Okay, very good. So yeah, recalibrating is kind of uh, checking the standards so we can move, we can mm -hmm. uh, review them and then change them in a way that is going to work better now. Mm -hmm. Let's see. There are no other, I guess. What is our reminder? Something you put not to forget something. Very good. Something for you to remember things that happen or that will happen in the future or anything like that. Good. The next one is going to be for Ana Claudia. Okay. In the near term, you will see a number of reports and analysis from the center that continue to build on our portfolio of generational, generational, <laughs> generational <laughs> research. Today, we use, uh, issued a report looking for the first time at how members of Generation Z view some of the key social and political issues facing the nation today and how their views compare with those of all the generations. To be sure, the views of this generation are not fully formed and could change consider. <clears throat> I guess we lost connection. I think uh -huh, we, we lost the connection. Okay. So no worries. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna finish. Says and cool change considerably as they age and as national and global events intervene. Even so, this early look provides some compelling clues about how Gen Z will help shape the future political landscape. Okay, so this is like analysis on how this is happening and it says that for the first time, some members of Generation Z view some of the key social and political issues facing the nation. So now they are already researching about these people that are for the very first time being witnesses of what is happening in the world and they are starting to research why, uh, what is going to be the effect on this new generation. Interesting. So let's see, let's hope for the better. I'm not that sure, but anyways. Okay, let's see. Uh, portfolio, what is a portfolio? Maybe a collection of your previous work. Well, yeah, that is kind of a portfolio. So that is it, like different things, right? That you can show. Let's see what else. Clues, what are clues? Are some ideas you can give someone to like, find out an answer? Like right. hints? Like hints. Okay. So, yeah, there are like ideas, hints that you send to people so they can figure it out what you're talking about, right? So, good. Okay. The other two paragraphs are going to be for Danny. Okay. And in the coming weeks, right? Uh, yeah, please. In the coming weeks, we will be releasing demographic analysis, analysis that compare millennials to previous generations at the same stage in their life cycle to see if the demographic, economic, and household household dynamics of millennials continue to stand 
apart from the predecessors. In addition, we will build on our research on team technology used by exploring the daily life aspiration and pre pres pressures today's 13 to 17 years old face as they navigate the teenage the teenage years. Yet we remain con caution caution cautious. cautious cautious about what can be projected onto a generation when they remain so young. Donald Trump uh, may be the first US president, president most Gen Zers know as they turn 18. Uh, and just as the contrast between George W. Bush and Barack Obama shaped the political debate, debate for millennials. The current political environment may have a similar effect on the ad attitudes and engagement of Gen Z. So, uh, how, so how remains a question. As important as today's news may seem, is more than likely that technologies debate debates and debates. even debates and events that will shape generation z are still yet to be known good what do you get from this well um <clears throat> the first is is uh, that uh, this um these researches uh, will release um, um, a, a, com a compare a comparison. I don't know how to say this, the word uh, between millennials and the other ages <coughs> in very very different um, ways, like um, economic, demographic, and household and, and all that kind of things and to 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 get a better known to this this kind of 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 group of people of the age um well and the other hand um it it talk about uh, how the president okay. Um, in the U.S., uh, how um, the political yeah. environment and the on the how that have influenced in the in these um, in these ages. Very good. So definitely, so def definitely, the politics is influencing also our country. They see like leaders, and they are getting familiar to the way that they manage people. I mean, that happens, that happens in all the countries, I mean, here in Africa. So it's kind of interesting. Let's check some words, uh, let's see. What is household? Anybody knows? Well, actually that refers to activities from the house, right? That is it. Things that are happening around the house. Let's see what else. Uh, for the dress, I don't see any other word. Okay. It says, we look forward to spending the next few years studying this generation as it earns adulthood. All the while, we'll keep in mind that generations are a lens through which to understand societal change, rather than a label with which to oversimplify differences between groups. Well, the last part is interesting because it's kind of, it's like, uh, 
for 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 people to identify to understand society changes so of course this world is not the same that we had 20 years ago and is this is not the same that we had 40 60 100 years ago and it's not going to be the same in 20 more years so definitely that is happening and it's happening very fast accelerating by the social media internet and many things like that that's why it's very powerful i mean have you ever asked yourself why some people some millionaires they want to purchase they want to buy let's say social media like whatsapp facebook that is supposed that they are for free nothing is for free right why do you believe that they are more into that one because it is easier they try to make everything easier practical okay very good practical well do you know that they have all the data that we have right like all your information whenever you chat every word that you send is there in their servers and they are able to analyze to keep that one and analyze what is going to happen what would you like to buy what would you like to do who are you going to vote for sometimes i mean do you remember that facebook was in a trial and, and he had to pay a lot of money because he permit through the social media to manipulate people so they are able to go one way or the other way so social media is powerful i mean yeah maybe you can go to the app store and download it for free the app is for free for you to download definitely is is not free everything or your data is going to be there it's supposed that it's not for sale it's supposed that there are laws that prevent that to happen but what happens if the government is like uh, the one who requires that information well that's a different story right okay what do you think about that no opinions um i think that yeah like you said uh, all information is out of there in, in the internet so we don't have that the, the privacy that we would like to, to have so for example the the, the advertisements always appear when we say previously something that we want to buy and we have to care about what we what we post and what we share in the internet because it's public. You know, there is no privacy. So that's why how, for example, um, this 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 person Elon Musk he want, wanted to buy Twitter because he wants to to domain that that social media and in a certain way try to control the new generation. Because the, the mindset so I think in, in that way they can have control about the, the new generation kind of dangerous anyways but well let's see what happens in the future okay my friends we are running out of time so I'm going to check the attendance and then I will be uh, letting you go and sleep a little while. Ah, that's Susana Cáceres. Present, present teacher. Good, Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando, good. <laughs> Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. 
Present. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanés. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Present. Luis. Okay. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleyma Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good. The one one for today is for Juan Miguel Brand. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very nice uh, night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Thank you, teacher. Bye-bye. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.